my accusers, then, as I maintain, have said with all the thing that is true, but from me you shall hear the whole truth, not, I can assure you, gentlemen, in flowery language like this, decked up with fine words and phrases. No, what you will hear will be a straightforward speech in the first words that occur to me, confident as I am in the justice of my cause, and I do not want any of you to expect anything different. It would hardly be suitable, gentlemen, for a man of my age to address you in the artificial language of a schoolboy orator. One thing, however, I do most earnestly beg and entreat of you. If you hear me defending myself in the same language which it has been my habit to use, both in the open spaces of this city, where many of you have heard me, and elsewhere, do not be surprised, and do not interrupt. Let me remind you of my position. This is my first appearance in the court of law at the age of 70, and so I am a complete stranger to the language of this place. Now, if I were really from another country, you would naturally excuse me if I spoke in the manner and dialect in which I had been brought up, and so in the present case I make this request of you, which I think is only reasonable, to disregard the manner of my speech, it may be better or it may be worse, and to consider and concentrate your attention upon this one question, whether my claims are fair or not. That is the first duty of a juryman, just as it is the pleader's duty to speak the truth. 